This is uh, tape three in uh, the series uh, talking about the room, illustrating, uh, my, this is my in interpreting the room. Um, and I want to, uh, I thought I was finished, but I want to add in now something else. Um, this is a uh, little theater exercise that uh, from the Eastern theater tradition, the uh, tradition of uh, Kabuki, Katakali, uh, meditative uh, kind of uh, processes uh, that is now uh, all the rage in the avant-garde uh, in the United States, in Europe, especially the Mammoth Mice Theater Company, did their, they use this kind of material, but I'm sure just about any major studio is uh, teaching students these, this sort of thing these days. But it, it's uh, beautiful the way it ties right in with uh, Likute Moharan, uh, the theory we've been dealing with. So I just wanted to quickly throw it in, no extra charge, as another way to, to help get a handle. Especially it relates to a 51, uh, essay 51 in uh, Nakhna Breslau's uh, collected essays, Likute Moharan. So here's a little exercise. Uh, it's called the uh, Pure Process Mode. Uh, it's really very simple. It's based on uh, what, what people mostly know about these days is Tai Chi. So in, I'll just, I'm just going to do it uh, from the neck up here, from the, from the top half of my body, because there's not much room here to, I, I could stand up. But, um, really, you can get the idea even with one hand. I'll just, I can do it just with one hand here. It's so simple. We just take the idea of... Uh, basically moving my hand freely with the awareness. By awareness, I mean awareness, first of all, in the outer zone. I see what I'm doing. I see the hand, the arm. I see it moving. Move it freely, all the joints. So no, nothing is, uh, is stuck. Everything is flexible. I'm aware of it uh, inside my body kinesthetically as I move my hand, as I move all the muscles, uh, my awareness. And uh, in my imagination, I'm also have uh, aware of possibilities. Uh, I could imagine, for example, that it's a uh, that it's what could it be a, a fan that I'm fanning myself with a fan, or I can imagine it's uh, some kind of a frog. Uh, or I can imagine uh, any, anything I want. Uh, it's uh, it's a thumb, and I'm a baby sucking my thumb. Or it could be, I, mean, I can imagine, I can imagine the, everybody's into using this idea as a telephone. I can imagine it's a telephone. Whatever, but the hand is constantly moving. And the theater, process, the theater these days, uh, it's called the pure process mode. Pure process mode. Now, the word pure is very important because that's a key word in, in Nachman Bresse's essay number 51. He says here, he's quoting some rabbi that says, uh, it says, when you approach, and that's a key word, approach, the pure marble stones, there's the word pure, uh, do not say water, water, as it is said, uh, he who speaks falsely will not be sustained before my eyes. Now, my eyes is very important. We talked about that in the other two preceding videos of this series. So we have eyes, we have uh, uh, approaching, we have, uh, as the key words here, oh, pure, those three words, all right? So, first of all, pure. Uh, this is the pure process mode, all right? And uh, each form that I settle into here for a moment, uh, the, the, the fan idea, the thumb idea, the telephone idea, each one comes in and out of focus, all right? Um, and one element here that's, is, is, is the observer, that's me watching this whole thing, uh, monitoring the whole process, and that's the eyes, the eyes, okay? And I'm gonna make a point here that by eyes, we mean but uh, what Plato says when he talks about uh, if we had eyes to see true beauty, and uh, Schopenhauer says the eye of the world, and now Nachman of is gonna talk about the eyes, eye of God's providence. Uh, it's all the same eyes here, and it's the, like the third eye here uh, that sees uh, more than the, the other two eyes do sees inside and out, and uh, like sees an x-ray of what's going on, not just what's going on. Okay, now with that context, let's try, let's uh, add some more stuff in here. Um, so let's see here, we have, uh, when you approach the pure marble stones, 
let's go back and see who he's going to, he's going to, not going to rest, I was going to comment on that quote here, on the page. All right. Pure shayish, which is the as pure, the pure marble. Uh, again, when you approach the pure avne shayish, marble stones, do not say water, water, as it is said, he who speaks falsely will not be sustained by my eyes. So first of all, what does it mean? What do we mean by falsely? That's, that's easy to grab off right away. If we say that the pure process mode is only pure if the forms are constantly coming into focus and dissolving, then what's impure is when one of these forms decides to, let's say, the... Uh, the telephone idea decides to say stick, it's st stuck like that. And let's say we get some crappy actor that doesn't know how to uh, uh, go in and out of focus here. Uh, he's going to get stuck. He's going to be too deliberate when he does an exercise like this. He won't be able to let it go. He'll hang on to that. And, uh, um, uh, in the theater, we talk about an actor that's playing ideas about the scene. He won't let, uh, he won't, he won't, not able to be here and now and concentrate on the moments, being in touch with each situation as it comes along. He's, he's got a preset idea about the scene. Well, the scene, it's about a telephone, and I'm not going to let go of that idea because uh, I don't know any better. I don't know how to work uh, in the proper active passive balance uh, like that. I'm not a prophet. I'm just a hack actor, so I'm going to get stuck in my image of it playing a telephone. All right? Um, so that's falsely. That's called sheker, fal falseness here in this, in this metaphor. So when a person is too deliberate, gets locked into one form like that, then uh, he won't be sustained before my, not, my eyes. The, the divine providence here, which is seeing the, over, the overall picture here, over the whole process, all the different levels, uh, is going to not take that, uh, is going to reject that, because the, the divine prof, uh, eyes here, the eyes that are looking for truth, are, are going to say, that's not truth, that's... Uh, that's falseness. He's stuck in some one-sided uh, idea of reality. He's not open to the whole, like, the whole reality. All right? So that's falseness, being stuck in one, uh, one form. So when you approach the, now in other words, approach. Uh, let, let's go to Abne Shaish, the marble stones. Now he takes he takes the word uh, Av, father in Hebrew, and he takes the word Ben, son in Hebrew. And he puts it together, he likes to play with words, Aven, which is putting together father and son. Well, that's almost you get the trinity of the whole of Christianity, and sure, sure enough, the, the son here is very close to the idea of the Jesus idea, but we don't need Jesus in Judaism. We have Moses or the Merkava, any other image here that, that of the dialectic, uh, you know, the process uh, of one to the many, to the, from the oneness to the manyness to the integration of the one and the many. The thesis, antithesis, synthesis. So that idea here is that's the sun, or another word for it is the logos, the word, the, the, the constant process of forms being born from the void, a new idea, the telephone idea, but then uh, the symptom moment comes, a moment of free choice when uh, the actor uh, allows himself to, to, to go back to the state of not knowing long enough to discover a new idea. So maybe it's going to be, ah, it's like a, it's a pistol, all right? It's a pistol, bang, bang, bang and then let the pistol dissolve, and there's a moment of free choice there again, a moment of tzimtzum, where that pistol idea, uh, uh, the relationship between the pistol and the victim, you know, that sets itself up for the new opposition there, uh, dies, is negation of that negation of the one without a second, and we go back to the pure process mode again. So that process of en uh, endless process of uh, coming and coming and going, uh, death and rebirth, uh, karma, whatever you want to call it, that we call it in, in, in the Kabbalah, the Tzimtzum moment, the moment of free choice where uh, the, a person is in the void and, and opens himself to the possibility of a new idea, the ego contracts, and uh, the, new, the new idea comes out of the void, and that's the new, the new free choice. Okay, so now we're going to put that, that into the, that process, into the... Uh, um, context of 51, uh, it, it fits right in, no problem at all. Uh, first of all, we have the sun. So then, let's see. We have before and after creation. So we, first of all, before creation is uh, the pure process mode. It's all one. The forms dissolving and the, and the, the, the background and the foreground uh, are all oneness, as we say, God, God and, and his name. The naming is a different forms coming one after the other. Each name is a, each form is another point of view, another name of about reality, uh, and so these forms are coming and going. 
Um, so the God, God, which is the Father of, and the Son, which is the Logos, the, the ongoing dialectic, the spiral of all these forms coming and going, uh, come together here. In the, we have the God uh, the, and his, his name. Uh, the, God, uh, the name of God and God are, are, are coming together here in oneness. That's oneness. Avne. Um, let's see. So, so before before creation, it's when all, everything is one. There, there's no particular focusing on any particular form. They all come and go. The, the, the telephone comes and goes. But I'm not really aware of focusing on at the telephone. The, the, the fish comes and goes, I'm not focusing on the fish, but I'm just letting all these forms one after the other flow. That's the, the one without a second, and the, the third eye here looks at, as the uh, divine providence looks at that and uh, says, uh, Toh, very good, this is good, this is uh, the initial state, and then out of that come one by one the forms and they, they dissolve. So that's the second step, that's the state of the sun, the antithesis, the many, and then finally the reintegration of, the, of those. Um, so that's the idea of bringing uh, shaish to avne. In other words, when we say approach or to bring to uh, to approach the avne shaish, the the, uh, the the avne the nevin uh, the, the father son thing to approach that is all the, to, is the idea of the coming solution in gestalt therapy, the mashiach that's always on the on the verge of emerging. That approaching is the moment of free choice where there's always a possibility that Mashiach could come at, the total integration could come at this moment. Um, so that's to say the pure state, the pure state, uh, and Nathan wants to say that uh, the right side of the tree of life, it, it, the side of the, the, the total integration, the oneness, uh, the pre-creation, that's pre-creation. Then creation has two aspects. It has the pure aspect, which is the uh, state where the forms come and go, uh, come into focus and go out of focus. Uh, and then there's the, 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 the false state, the, the, the lying state, where, where they don't come out of focus. One of them latches on, hangs on, uh, whatever one it is, it will let go. So, um, so now the state where one, one form hangs on and won't let go, now we're going to look at this in terms of the alchemy, uh, the four, four elements of alchemy of water, earth, uh, starting in this end view, from your point of view, water, earth, air, and fire. So the water is the, uh, that, that becomes saturated with alchemical earth because it's, uh, the earth is salty. So we have salt tears that symbolizes, uh, first of all, depression, emotionally, getting stuck in your feelings. Uh, but also uh, forms getting stuck. Anyway, any way of getting stuck in, in some kind of uh, impasse, whatever it is, but, and so the process doesn't flow. That's uh, too much on the left side, too much uh, cause and effect logic. Um, so, the, so the metaphor there is tears. Uh, water plus, plus earth together gives salty water, which is, which is, uh, which is I know, so we're not supposed to say when we're approaching Mashiach, when Mashiach's about to be there, and we're, we're working in the, in the here and now uh, very effectively. We don't want to get stuck in the idea of, of saying water, water, because water, water implies tears, which implies uh, alchemical uh, earth and getting stuck and all that stuff. We want to, uh, the water moment has to come. We want the form to come. And uh, alchemical earth, we want the form to come clearly into focus so we could see and know what it is. But then the next step is we want to let it dissolve. So we don't go, then go to the void again, the Tim Tim moment of free choice. We now moved over from the left side, from the right side to the left side of the tree of life, and then uh, once we're on the left side, we're at bina. Then we're free to move down to uh, to any bina, din, uh, hod, mal. You saw malchut. We rewrite, rewrite down, and we're free to move up and down that left pillar, which is uh, what he's saying when he says that. Uh, um, the state of pure and impure are two parts of basically the same state of after creation. After creation, we have pure and impure as an opposition. Either we're on Bina, which is pure, or we're stuck on Malchut, uh, Malchut, uh, the Sitra Ach. We're stuck on the other the side of the kingdom of, of uh, the, the, the other side, the kingdom of evil, where we're stuck in, in lies and everything. So uh, that, that's how we move up and down, the left side from, uh, from pure free choice to uh, down on the bottom, uh, Malchut, uh, 
as, as really stuck, kingdom of evil. But all the time, we're free to move up and down by simply uh, doing, uh, we can always shift over to the other side, to the right side, and come back again and start the whole process again. As long as we keep the system uh, moving and uh, get the proper balance, we can always get unstuck from, from too much uh, left side just by simply doing some more of the work on the awareness, which opens up the new uh, voids, the air, and, and then allows a new fire to come into the void, the uh, life on fire, and to complete the cycle again. Uh, therefore the reward, therefore, and he says, therefore the reward in the world to come, no eye has seen it, but you God, right. Uh, only the point of view that is aware of the total uh, proper balance that we're looking for here, uh, the middle way, the pure process mode, uh, the forms coming out of focus, only that third eye point of view that can, uh, will, will see all the stages going by and not uh, interfere, only that, that eye can see the whole process. But if you look at it from any other point of view, uh, from the point of view of any of the stuck forms, from the point of view of the telephone, and every day trying to make a phone call to get somebody, uh, the idea of st interrupting my phone call, if it's some pure process mode or something, or for getting in touch with uh, something that interferes with my, with my focus on my telephone conversation uh, is alien. Uh, we, I, I don't want to hear about that. I just want to go on my phone conversation. Uh, so that, that's being stuck. That's, that's, uh, so uh, in that, when you're stuck like that, then, uh, then you're at a point of view that, that everyday ego can relate to, but God doesn't want to look at that. So, he, when, uh, God, uh, the idea of speaking, uh, having an endless conversation on a telephone, uh, will not be sustained before my eyes. In other words, the, uh, God's eye, which is the, the eye of divine providence, will not tolerate getting stuck in one, uh, one endless game in your life. So, so people that are stuck in neurotics, uh, manipulators, uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, or hang-ups that people have are not uh, really tolerated by the uh, the third eye, the eye of uh, that's seeking truth, the eye that uh, wants to be released from the eye of the world that wants to be released from the like Schopenhauer says from the will, or what Nachman says the, the the eye of divine providence will not tolerate us getting stuck as neurotics. So we need to go get gestalt therapy and get, uh, get get unstuck from being stuck in confluence, or introjection, or projection, or retroflexion, or egotism, the whole, the whole circus there. All right. Um, so uh, again, it, it's, now that I've said it, any one of these sentences from, from, 52, from 51 here uh, fits, fits right in. For example, here's a sentence in the last section. He says, this is why falsehood is, harm, falsehood is harmful to the eyes. Through falsehood, falsehood, one removes the eye of divine providence and so damages the eyes, which are the aspect of providence. Of course, that's what we just said. Let's say that again. This is why falsehood, in other words, getting stuck in any form here, uh, in any sta stage of the dialectic here, is harmful to the, to the eyes. But what he means is not our eyes, but he means God's eyes. The eye, or you might say the idea of conscience, if you like, if you like Kant, uh, or the idea of aesthetic judgment, if you like Kant. Uh, although falsehood, one through falsehood, uh, getting stuck in too much irrational thinking, one removes the uh, uh, critical judgments. Uh, one gets, one removes the uh, the eye of divine providence, uh, the, the third eye, aesthetic judgment, and so damages the eyes, which are the aspect of providence. So uh, we get muddled up. We don't have clear ideas when we're not uh, living in a balanced, proper, balanced way between. Uh, coming in and out of forms. Now, let's look at the show for a second. The show is mostly, uh, where is, where is the, the guy of God in the show? It's the super objective. The, from the point of this piece, which I didn't realize it when I was making the piece, but I was being, since I was working in the, in the here and now, I was being guided by a certain river of phenomenological, uh, phenomenological, phenomenological experience here. And it turned out that my super objective was, like I said before, dealing with mortality, a, a person struggling to have a life on fire, d despite realizing in a, in a midlife crisis that life is, uh, won't last forever. So my objective, super objective here, which I wasn't aware of until uh, even, even when I made the piece, finally when I look back at it, I begin to see that. Uh, that if that if you'd say we hypothesized that that idea was pulling me forward as a super objective, as a final cause. Um, 
then um, that point of view, that of, of uh, life uh, raging against the, the dying of the light, that's the, the, the main point, the idea here. And that idea was, was in a sense, permeating all of the, uh, the whole process. So if I, for example, had gotten stuck, if I didn't know enough about how to do Gestalt therapy, and allow myself to get stuck in any one of those forms along the way, the walls, the, 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 the floor, the, the, the air, the, the van, the woman, the, the jack-in-the-box, any of those things, if I allowed myself to get stuck there and didn't finally bring the thing to the final uh, crisis moment uh, where all the different states were in, uh, suspended there in a moment of, and we don't know what's going to happen, is they going to, what, what, what the woman's going to do, uh, is, the, is the, the thing going to be reach a climax or not, oh, and all that more critical moment when everything at the end is in a state of maximum uh, uh, focus and all the different elements together. Um, I, that wouldn't have been able to happen if I had uh, not been somehow or other with my third eye even though I wasn't aware it was happening at the same time, uh, constantly monitoring the process of the forms coming in out of focus. So here the super objective from a Stanislavski point of view is pulling the action. If I look at it this way in a Brechtian point of view of, of an actor using a, for, a series of forms, a, a vocabulary of forms that he's learned, then uh, that's Brechtian theater. We, we talk about the performer on top of his material, watching his body and making uh, constantly get here and here and now ideas. And then th that process of here and now ideas, the performer on top of his material, is the moment of pure uh, purity. And uh, as long as that purity is, is functioning, a uh, pure status of uh, pre pre pure free choice, then the, the Brechtian actor is, is free, creative, to go on working on a score. And the audience will be entertained because they're, they're constantly seeing live form. They're constantly seeing uh, what we call the Nachman calls the relationship of chiyut and nun, chet, vitality. Uh, grace between the, the, uh, the performer as the center of consciousness and, and the score that he's playing, and that, that's a constantly living relationship, so we have live form in the Brechtian theater. Now, in the equivalent of the Stanislavski theater is the super objective. As long as the audience is seeing that the actor is, is, is surrendering to circumstances every moment of, of his acting score, uh, constantly involved or all in all this, uh, either on all the levels of awareness with his in his body and in contact with the scene partner and the whole scene there using his imagination, all these things are working right. The audio, the super objective, uh, if the actor is prepared himself properly, uh, is carrying the whole thing along, and uh, the audience is seeing again live form, uh, a living process. Uh, the audience is, and so the actor is, is allowing himself uh, to be this uh, eye of God, the uh, eye of divine providence, monitoring his own work. At the same time, the audience is allowed to have that point of view of the eye of God also, looking at, uh, looking at, as the eye of the world, you might say, looking at the eye of God, or any way, any metaphor you want to come up with there. Um, so that's the holistic state here that ties in with uh, romanticism, all the different things that were happening in those days. And uh, so we see it in the theater very clearly, uh, in, as I showed you, in these two different states. In my show, I think I, I was successful in uh, put, implementing that. Gestalt therapy is, is, is in a sense, the, the preparation for, uh, for any one of these acting uh, techniques because the actor, first of all, goes through the whole process, like I went through it uh, doing that exercise, I was doing gestalt therapy with the picture. So now that I did that, for example, I could take a, a show so, uh, that I want some character and I can use all those elements of the man, the woman, the, the air, the, the walls, the floor, I, any one of those, the, the, the narrator, any one of those is, is an element that I can use now that I peeled the onion to put, it, to put the onion back together and then make a character that I personally as an actor could be totally in touch with because I I, I discovered those things as coming out of my existence myself. Um, so, so, this, uh, so the Gestalt therapy process is what we call, what Stas Stanislavski uh, is very, very referring to, I believe, except uh, he wasn't using Kabbalah. He, must, he, he knew about a thing called theosophy, which I don't know what theosophy is exactly, but I'm sure it was some kind of related dialectical system, because there, really there ain't no other story. This is the old story. And, uh, so an actor prepares is basically saying that an actor, uh, even though you want to, don't want to call it gestalt therapy, is doing something like this, peeling the onion process, to get in touch with reality so that he can present reality. 
Yeah, and if you can't, you can't show the audience what you don't have. And uh, a process like this, Gestalt therapy, is the probably the paradigm basic example of a uh, simple basic way to get to a lot of reality that you can use as an artist. Uh, at least in our Western society, where the focus is more on verbalizing uh, than in the Eastern cultures. Um, so there it is. I think I've showed the connection between uh, 51 here and uh, my show and, uh, and um, some of these theater techniques and ways of thinking about performing. Okay, I guess uh, that's all I need to do right now. This will be a supplement to the, the other two videos, which I hope to see. All right, so uh, thank you.